how they are, Mr. Jenks. Eating into that hillside like locusts. We'll go over there, Paul. That's bad enough, but now I understand they're planning to move over about 50 miles south of Crescent Mountain. Cut the timber there. Yeah, that's what I hear. That's, that's about, well, it's over 3,000 acres of, of watershed. Now, you're a land agent, Mr. Jenks. You know what that means. It means that that range below Crescent Mountain will be turned into a dust bowl. Let me see that map. But Mr. Milburn is within the law, Mr. Cartwright. Anybody under the law now that doesn't own land in Nevada can go in and file a timber claim. How's it work? Well, under the Preemption Act, you go in, make improvements on a quarter section of land, then you can claim it for $200. Milburn owns a lot of land in Nevada. How does he get by with that? Well, he's got a lot of men working for him that don't. See, what they do is each one of these hands goes in, he claims a quarter section, and he sells the timber off to Milburn for $1. Or he goes looking for another job. Well, that's just plain stealing, then, ain't it? In a manner of speaking, it is. But it's also legal. It's also criminal. I'll take a look at this. See, without that quarter section, Milburn couldn't afford to get his timber out. No access, no water. What do you think? I think you're right. Hey, Oz, that pasture land Pa gave us last year? Yeah. I'll toss you for it. When it take off? One of us wouldn't own any land in Nevada, would we? That's right. Call it. Heads. You win. That wipes me out. I guess I can claim that quarter section now, huh, Mr. Jenks? That's right. Yeah, I think it's worth a try. I'll do better than try. Take me a day to get there, two days to do the improvements. I'll meet you at the Carson land office on Friday. Yeah, Mr. Jenks, someday there's going to be a law to protect those forests. When that day comes, I sure hope there's some forests around to protect. I do believe I cuffed myself one at long last. Come on, boy. Get off your horse and come on down here. Keep your hands away from that gun. Yes, ma'am. It, uh, it sure helped me, ma'am, if I, if I knew what this was all about. Well, I told you. I was fixing to catch myself a man. That's all. You do real fine with the muscle you got. The charm and all. I got myself a bit of need right now. Come on. Let's go home. Look, lady, I'm trying to be... I'm not aiming to hit you. But I'm shooting with my left hand and unnatural. And this gun's got a hair trigger. Uh, it's, uh, it's also empty. No, it ain't. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, I did fire both barrels. Kind of a fool thing to do, wasn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> you said something about a house nearby. Yonder, near the edge of the lake. <laughs> Come on, boy. Well, it's a real pretty place you got here. Water, all them pines, real pretty. Yeah, just the way the Lord made it, except for the cabin. How long have you been living here? I've been living up here for years, boy. Why? I have no reason. I, I just didn't expect to find anybody up here, that's all. Tie up that animal of yours. There's chores to be done. Yes, ma'am.
Some I think you ought to know. My name's Carrie. Miss Amos Pickett. My Amos been gone uh, three years and more. I'm sorry, Miss Carrie. How are you called, boy? Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. I'd like you to take a look at this map. Yeah, I ain't had much since yesterday, Joe. Truth be told, I ain't had nothing at all. There's some beans on the back of the stove. I'll warm them up for supper. Could you do it for me? Miss Carey? in that hand. How'd you hurt it? You know, I've been trapping critters most of my days. First time I ever got chawed on. But you were bitten. You better let me take a look at that. No, it's nothing. If it's nothing. An animal bites nothing to fool with. You'll let a doctor see it. No, no worry you get hit about it. It'll heal in time. Well, it wouldn't hurt none to have the doctor look at it. Besides, you're gonna have to ride into town with me anyway. What do you mean? That's what I was trying to tell you before. This property you're living on. That's government land. You're gonna have to file a claim. Well, it ain't government land, it's mine. Nobody's gonna tell me I'm different. Well, Miss Carey, it is. Now, you like living here, don't you? What kind of a fool question is that? I wouldn't be here if I didn't. My Amos lying over there in the Lake Grove, I wouldn't live nowhere else. Hey, Ma'am, you will be living somewhere else unless Come you... over here, boy. Here, boy. Well, wind talking to the pines. Miss Carrie, oh, that's I... just how my Amos used to say it. Just like. Pure mountain man, my Amos. Couldn't live nowhere else but in the deep piney woods. Couldn't breathe nowhere else. You'll be feeling things the same way, Joe. Well, in different pines where I come from, the same wind, I guess. It was Gary, I'm a rancher, but I care about the forest, too. Now, you're gonna have to file on this property. You're gonna lose it. It ain't possible. It's mine, and it's gonna stay mine as long as I draw breath. Ma'am, it ain't yours, and it's not gonna stay yours unless you file a claim and pay the government $200. Land offices and clerks and rule books meaning what they want them to mean. You know them clerks took away a ranch from my Amos's daddy, run a road smack through his cabin, that's why we come here, to get clean away from everybody. My Amos built this cabin, and he left it for me, and I don't have to claim on what's already mine. Ma'am, it's the law. It's the law. If you don't file, you're gonna find your piney wood stripped clean. You're just trying to scare me. I am not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Now, there's a man named Milburn, Jason Milburn. Now, he's gonna log out the whole side of Crescent Mountain. He can't. He can't. It don't belong to him. You keep saying he can't. He can and he will. Unless you file that claim, you're going to do it tomorrow. Oh. Oh. It's a I'm going to sit up. Here. Oh. You want me to get you something? You've got a lot of gentleness in you, Joe. Just like my Amos. Blanket on me, you know. Stay and do for me, just for a little. Just till I get my strength back. That doing for you isn't gonna help anything, Carrie. Now you're gonna have to file that claim and you're gonna have to see a doctor. 
and have him lop off my hand. Is that what you're so scared about? Look, if it's that bad... No, the... no. It ain't nowhere near that bad. All right, then it's settled. Tomorrow I take you to the doctor and to the land office. You go and get some sleep. Talk about tomorrow when tomorrow comes. Not me, we. We're going to ride into town like I said last night. I'm not going with you. I told you I wasn't going with you. Well, you are going. If you don't, there's a man named Milburn who's going to file on this land of yours. All this talk about a man named Milburn. I think you're going to steal my tiny woods yourself. Oh, now, come on, Carrie. You know better than that. Why don't you stop your arguing, go on in the house and get ready to ride into town with me. I can't, even if I wanted to. I'm too sick to sit a horse. All right, I'll file a claim for you and bring the doctor out here. File all the claims you want to. You still won't get my piney woods. I'll send you off. I fought Indians are plenty. Oh. Let me see that. No, leave it be. It's all no, right. Don't no, he's all right of like himself. Is. Leave it be. I'm sorry I hurt your hand. Go on right out. Before you go, Fill a water bucket down to the lake. The well's been dry for a year. The least you can do when you're leaving a poor old lady to fend for herself. got loose. Well, my horse got loose. Now, you turned him loose, didn't you? All right, well, I'm gonna find that horse, I'm gonna saddle him, I'm gonna ride him into town. You can't leave me without any food in the house. Well, now, don't you give me none of that. You got enough food in there to keep you till I get back. Thank you. 
Joe. I've been going through the cupboard. There ain't enough food left for one supper. Hey, Carrie, we've been through all this before. I checked the cupboard. There's plenty of food there for you. I wish you'd come and see for yourself. I'm telling you the truth. Horse better be there when I come out. You wouldn't leave a poor old lady to starve now, would you? claim on Friday. Well, he is, but uh, Austin and I here decided we were going to ride up to Crescent and uh, thought maybe he'd like to ride along with us. That way he could be a witness to the improvements that Joe made and also have that claim right in hand to Scott Milburn. Now I have work to do here. Those streams up there are chock plum full of them trout. Now, Mr. Jenks, the government has a stake in that watershed, too. The basin it feeds won't be worth a cent once all that timber's gone. And you'll have at least 20 ranches going bankrupt, and you'll have flood and drought and more flood and more drought. Oh, and them trout are good eating, too. They do everything but jump right out of the stream into your frying pan. Well, there's nothing like fresh trout for breakfast. All right. You know, we do have a stake in that watershed. Look forward to the ride. It's been ten years since I rode a horse that far. But it's... it's a worthy cause. It took me three hours to flush out that partridge, and you, you saw it was burning, you couldn't even give me a holler. I figured you'd notice it and come running. You did. Well, that's what you figured, huh? All right, fine. Now, the soup hasn't burned, you better see it doesn't, because that's all you're going to have for the next day. What do you mean? I mean, I'm going to file on this land for you, whether you like it or not. I'll see you Saturday morning. Joe Cartwright, Joe! You can't mean it, Joe. Joe Cartwright, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do me out of my piney woods this way. You can't. Claim jumper. You go down out of this mountain and you don't need never come back here. Never. Carrie Pickett, you're a stubborn, cantankerous old woman, but I'm going to save these piney woods for you in spite of yourself. Oh, Joe. I'm sick and I went on. Joe, please. Oh. <laughs> All right, come on, get up, Carrie. Come on, get up. It's not going to work. Not this time. You know, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of you trying to fool me, old woman. Scary?
don't you tell me how bad it was. I want nothing to do about it. It'll heal by itself. You've got to have a doctor. Sure. Doctor, I'll leave me one-handed. No. Can't do it for myself no more. I have to leave my mountain. My Amos is here. Can't leave nowhere else. I breathe free, Joe. Don't you worry, Miss Carey, you're gonna breathe free. Try and get some sleep. I'll be back with that doctor as quick as I can. It's not all that bad, Joe. objects if we get off to a late start in the morning. Well, ain't no big hurry, sir, Paul. No, no, Joe will have finished the improvement work by now. Yeah, good. We can get a little of that trout fish, huh? Yes. See, Jenks, I think what you need is a good night's rest. Let's see if we can find ourselves a place to sleep. And that's, uh, three dinners and, uh, five steaks. What's a good place in town to find some rooms for the night? Right here, mister. Only place in Crescent City. Good. But I only have one room left. Uh, Mr. Milburn uh, and a couple of friends have rented the others already. Uh, the room has a double bed, though, and I could rustle up a cot. Uh, well, Mr. Jenks, you, uh, you take the cot and Hoss and I will share the bed. Hoss, can I at least have half the bed? Say, uh, did you get that cot up right away, please? I'm practically asleep on my feet. <laughs> Very good. Up the stairs, second door on the right. I'll have it up right away. Thank you. Looks like we got here just in time, huh? Over. Don. Did you see who went up the stairs? Who? Competitor of yours, Ben Cartwright. Cartwright, huh? Never met him. If I had access to his holdings, I could set up an operation be very lucrative, very. No chance. Mr. Cartwright is a man of principle. He believes in conservation. Conservation, that's for dreamers and fools. And for people who feel an obligation to the future? Doc's principles are sure. Kind of rusty. But they're showing. Really, Doc? You developing principles? I would if I could afford it. But I can't. That's why I work for you. A few more remarks like that and you won't. What'd you find on the mountain? Well, there's a... There's a cabin on that key quarter section. And there's two people living there. A young guy and an old woman, a sick old woman. There's no record of anybody having filed a claim. It doesn't matter who's there. I'll buy the cabin, burn it down. We better ride as soon as it's light. Come on, I'll stand you to a nightcap. That's the young fellow I saw up on the mountain this morning. Oh, what'll it be, mister? Yeah, where can I find a doctor? You can't, not now. Doc Jarvis won't be back until morning. Was well, he the only doc in town? Tomorrow morning may be too late. Well, there's a doctor right here, Dr. Belden. Of course, he hasn't practiced for some time. 
Hey, Doc, why don't you at least see what you can do? Look, Doc, this lady needs your help real bad. Sorry. Uh, he still has his doctor's bag with him. You uh, might remind him of that. It's been so long since he's done any doctor, and he ain't gonna help that old lady. I know. That's the whole idea. Light the lamp. I'm coming in. Look, I told you. I don't understand. care what you told me. Light the lamp. I haven't practiced medicine for a long time. You're a doctor. You know more than I do. I need your help. You'll have to get somebody else. There isn't anybody else. It's an old woman. She's got an infected hand, poisoned by an animal bite. How badly? Pretty bad. Her hand's all swollen up. Running a high fever. Blood poison. An animal bite. That can mean an amputation. You want me to go with you to cut out the hand? I want you to save her life. What makes you think I can? I thought it was a doctor's job to try. You and everyone else. A doctor's supposed to be on call day and night to go anywhere, anytime. To give help and medicine to people who can't or won't pay. Well, I got tired of being poor. That's why I gave up the practice of medicine. Now, get out. Just what do you think you're doing? As your fee in advance, let's go. And if I say no, I suppose you'll draw your gun. What do you think? I believe you would. All right, sir. I'll go with you. Just like Joe says she was. Come back. Put the gun down, Karen. I ain't aiming to kill you exactly, but I'm shooting left-handed and unnatural. Yeah, and, and, this and you've only got one shot left. I know. We've been through this before. I come up with the gun down. Let Doc Belden take a look at you. I don't like my Amos right now, but Joe Cartwright, I want to know if this is a trick to get my piney away from me. Now, come on, Carrie. You know me better than that. It's no trick. You got my word, the doc won't do a thing without you say so. All right? That's my girl. Okay, doc, you can take a look at her.
Sure. I'll need a clean towel, Mr. Cartwright. Sorry. Sorry, then you know. But you're gonna have to lose it. Oh, sure. I told you, 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 Ready to die before you come. So I put on my my tiny silk scarf that Amos gave me for my wedding present. I've been treasuring it for my burying. I just want to die here near my Amos. You promised, Joe. You. you promised. Can't let you take off her hand. She's making a mistake. That infected hand isn't her life. Well, she thinks it is. You're gonna have to try to save it. Can't save her hand. You're gonna have to try something, anything. I can try a drain. But if it doesn't work, it'll be a life. We try the drain. Just so you don't take off my hand. Promise. Mr. Cartwright doesn't have to promise. I'll do what I can. All I can. Without amputation. Mr. Cartwright, I'll need your assistance. Fever breaks. If it breaks. All we can do now is wait and hope. Got a file on this land. I miscarried us. Too late now. Even if she lives, she won't be able to stay here. A month from now, there won't be a tree left on this mountain. Well, I wouldn't count on that. Milburn will be here soon with Marks and some of his loggers. I work for Mr. Milburn. They won't let you go down the mountain to the land office ahead of them. And just how do you think he's going to stop me? Five or six to one? They'll stop you. Even if you get past them, it's first come, first served at the land office. They need a signature on the paper. How are you going to get it? He must like working for a man like Milburn. He pays me very well. Yeah, and that's all you think about, huh? Now, whether it's right or wrong, just so you get your money. My job, filling out claim papers for Mr. Milburn. Just happened to have one of this quarter section. All it needs is a signature. Where's Marks? Watch out for Marks. He's tricky. Let's go and horse him with the corral. Come.
morning, young man. Mr. Milburn, I uh, trust Dr. Belden has proved useful that the patient is recovering. She's still pretty sick. Well, perhaps I can assist you in another way. The patient would be better off in town where she could get adequate help. If money's a problem, I'll uh, buy this cabin. Pay you handsomely for it. So that you can buy medicines and medical help. Oh, that's very generous. We're not interested. Well, this land isn't yours. You've uh, filed no claim. That'll be taken care of. I'm afraid it's a little too late for that. I don't think so. The improvements have already been made. I'll file a claim for the lady. Why don't you two get on your horses and get off this property? I uh, don't think I'm going to do that, young man. I think you will. Oh? As I said before, young man, I'm afraid I can't do that. Better tie up that young man. I don't want any more trouble. Put the gun away, Potter. You, Kelly, you come on down here and do like the boss said. Get a chunk of rope off that wall. No fire. Turn him loose. What is this, Belden? Quitting time, Mr. Milburn. This is one piece of timber you're not going to get. Doug. Put the gun away. You ain't the man for this kind of work. Try me. Doc, put the gun down, or I'll kill this young man here. Go ahead, Doc. I told you this wasn't your line of work, Doc. Well, we've got two to tie up now. Not the Doc. I told you there's a sick woman in there. She needs Doc Belden. Dr. Belden is an employee of mine. I'll see to it. He takes very good care of your friend in town. After you both get off this land. She's not well enough to make that trip. She may be dying. I'm a long ways from dying, Joe. My fever's broke. I've been watching you two. You get off my land, you trash. This isn't your land, madam. It sure is. I just signed this here claim paper. Where did you get that? The doc here, give it to me. Get this woman on a horse and get her into town. If you put that woman on a horse, you'll kill her. I'll risk it. Give me some water. Help, I'm a doctor. Mr. Cartwright, I, uh, I, I've always wanted to meet you, uh, perhaps under less awkward circumstances. What started off as a business proposition ended up as... I know exactly what happened here. Uh, sir, all I'm trying to do is... What you're trying to do is steal some more timber. As a businessman, Mr. Cartwright, you must understand. There's something you must understand. This is my son that you've beaten up. Look. Sir, 
Come on. Mr. Jenks, you bring that claim book with you? I sure do. That lady's claim paper, all filled out. And I got the money right here. Gold dust, my Amos brought it from California. I've been saving it against a modern need. Well, ma'am, I'm afraid that it isn't. It's like enough gold to me. What do you think, huh? Well, Mr. Jenks, I think by the time you get to Carson City, you'll find that there's probably more than $200 worth there. Oh, I'm sure there'll be enough here. Like I told you before, Mr. Velvet, get off this property. Joe, you saved my piney woods. <laughs> Boy, I want you to meet Carrie Pickett. Miss Pickett. And this is Doc Belton. Okay. He's been doing too much doctoring lately, but when he does, it's great. I think I'll do a great deal more from now on. You're a pretty good man in a fight, too. Thanks, Doc. I'm afraid I didn't help you too much, but you did a lot for me. You made me open my eyes and take a good look at myself. Well, I'll tell you, Doc, that one's going to be closed again unless you start using some of your own medicine. <laughs> You both need doctoring. Yeah, it looks like I'm the healthiest one around here. Come on in the house. Miss Carrie, I'll be back tomorrow to check on your hand. Right. Joe's cleaning up inside. I'll be out in a minute. Good. Are you all right, Joe? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Don't you worry about me. How are you going to be? Sure you'll be all right up here alone? Oh, I'll be fine. You know, I can hardly believe it. I was so scared for so long, and now all of a sudden everything's all right. And you done it for me, Joe. No. No, it wasn't just me. We all wanted it that way. Joe. I ain't seen the likes of you since my Amos. And before, neither. If I had me 20 years less... And if I had me 20 years more. Because I ain't never seen the likes of you, either. You're stubborn and... and you're cantankerous. But they just ain't making girls into women like that no more. I know I looked around. Goodbye, Gary Pickett. Goodbye, Joe Cartwright. Duty. What about the money? Not a trace of it. Excuse me. 
A dollar a day, cashed in advance. Did you look for the money? Well, we did and we didn't. Sheriff thinks that maybe the killer took the money along with the old man's horse. Probably needed an extra horse just to carry all that money. Like Walter Joe said, dead. Somebody walloped him with a junk of stove wood. What about the money? What about it? Well, did you find it? We'll find that when we find the killer. Excuse me. Well, he's all yours now, Harry. Since he hadn't any kin anybody knows about, uh, might as well get the burying over, huh? Whatever you say. Uh, tomorrow morning too soon? I'll be fine. Oh, uh, Sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff, that bruise on the side of his head. Now, that could have been caused by a piece of stove wood. But I've seen bruises like that on people that just fell down and died. Did you see the old man's place? Yeah, I've seen it. Put the plumb to pieces? Yeah. Well, he didn't do that after he fell down. <laughs> no, he sure didn't. The killer did it after he hit him on the head with the stove wood. Just like I said. <laughs> just, just like you said. Is there any logical leader run to the Chima Mountain? Ground is rocky, be hard to track. Yeah, 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 sure. right. yeah. 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 There's always a possibility the killer didn't find the money. I thought of that myself. Say, mister. That'll be one dollar. I just want to ask a question. Has Joe or Ben Cartwright been in there? Today? Never heard of him. There's always a chance he did find the money. That is a possibility. I'm Sheriff Mellett. My name's Cartwright. This your horse? Oh, not exactly, no. Well, you rode him into town, didn't you? I uh, did, Sheriff. You ain't gonna believe this. You just borrowed it. No, I, I found him. Uh-huh. You tell me all about it on the way to my office. Look, uh, Sheriff, I, I didn't steal that horse. Well, I'm not arresting you for stealing a horse. You're under arrest for murder. <laughs> This morning, my horse was gone, and I looked around, and I found this horse. Take off your gun belt, empty your pockets, and put the stuff on the desk. He may be some killer, but ain't a very good liar. Or well, maybe he's telling the truth. Any man who'd kill and steal wouldn't be above lying. I say, let's hang him right now and get it over with. Yeah, yeah right. right. Let's yeah, get right. Him. Right. Come on, get back, get back. Come on, come on. Get away from that window. Come on, get Got everything? That's it. Sheriff, I didn't steal that horse. I found him. Look here, my pa and little brother are going to be in town this afternoon or tomorrow, and they'll tell you what I'm saying is the truth. This way. <sighs> Sheriff. No, I didn't hear. Look here, we ranch down by Virginia City. It's the Ponderosa. Maybe you've heard of it. Now, you'd save us all a lot of trouble if you tell me where you hid the money. What money? One of these days, I'm going to have the simple pleasure of arresting the man who admits he's guilty. Well, you better arrest one that is first. Yeah, it's a shame. A sin and a shame. Be the biggest funeral this town's ever seen. Yeah, he's paying for it. Harry will collect his fees just as soon as they recover the money. What happens to the rest of the money? That well, does present a problem. There doesn't seem to be a will of any kind, and we know of no relatives. They had no close friends that we know of. Well, we just can't let the money sit there. The money could be used to benefit everybody. Fix up the town, paint the storefronts, dig drainage ditches. Build a church. That would come pretty far down on the list, Brother Stoner. Well, it's not right to hold Sunday services in a saloon. Well, look at it this way. You're challenging the devil in his own house. Careful what you call my saloon. Figure of speech, Henry. You think you'd better find the money before splitting it up? You bet the man who stole it, haven't you? Found a lock and key. 
You asked him where the money is. He's not talking. Maybe we should appeal to his better nature. Could I talk with the prisoner? Not by yourself, you don't. Might be a good idea if we all talk to him. Somebody see you. I'm Mayor Brigham, Mr. Cartwright, and I, uh... Well, let's get to the point. What'd you do with the money, Hoss? What money? The money you took from the old man before he killed him. I ain't killed nobody, and I found that horse. Mr. Cartwright, you'll have to admit that story's pretty thin. I'll have to admit that I could make up a better story. But if I did, it'd just be a lie. I'm Brother Stoner, Mr. Cartwright. I'm the one that does the preaching here, <laughs> for those who care to listen. Now, if there's anything that I can do... Well, there's one thing you can do. Tell me why nobody around here will listen to me. Well, if you want people to listen, you've got to tell them what they want to hear. I told them the truth. That's the last thing that most people want to hear. Riley. Now, the way I see it, we got him cold on a murder charge. But he's the only one that knows where the money is. Now, he probably figures that we're not going to let anything happen to him until we know where the money is. Well, then we'll have to convince him we're more interested in justice than in money. How do we do that? We take him out and lynch him. Not all the way. Just a little bit. Charlie, a lynching is like an avalanche. Not hard to start, but you ever try to stop for one? No, and I don't intend to. That's the sheriff's job. from across the street. sheriff here. He come to town twice a year, took her all day to save a penny on a pound of bacon and flour, then paid for a roll of bills as thick as you are. That old man was sitting on a mountain of money. Everybody around here knew that. How much you figure he had all together? I wouldn't know, Sheriff. Not the last man of a lifetime. Couldn't say. Maybe even two men. Unless one was greedy. Mighty good grub you got here, sir. Well, you tell me where that money is. And I might forget to lock this door and leave a horse tied out back. Well, like I said, I ain't got no way of knowing. All right, you take me to the money and we'll split it right down the middle. How do you get off locking a man up in jail? You ain't no better than a crook yourself. I'm going to give you to the count of five. And if you don't tell me what I want to know by then, I'm going to shoot you up some for trying to escape. One, two, three. Yeah, if you miss, I'll be sure to get him. Well, I'll keep them covered, Sheriff. You never know which way they'll jump. Thank you.
good thing I came along when I did. Yeah. That little heartburn. Well, you're gonna have some more heartburn because the boys down in the saloon are talking lynch. Just a little talk doesn't mean a thing. Well, you better let them know that. They think they mean it. Somebody comes around here looking for me, tell him I took a ride up to the old man's place, have a look around. Well, don't you think you ought to stay here and stop them people when they come? Stop them how? Well, with that gun. Those people are my friends and neighbors. I'm here to protect them, not to kill them. Well, what about the prisoner? Well, what about him? Someplace, let's go. Well, where's the sheriff? He's gone. We better get going. Too. I ain't going no place. I'm, I'm staying right here. Now listen to me. No, you wait a minute. If I run, then they'll sure think I'm guilty. They already think you're guilty. Well, they won't as soon as my poor little brother get here. By the time they get here, you're ready to be hung. Hung? Open up, sheriff. We've come for him. Open up. I'm going to save your life if I have to kill you to do it. That one's yours. Just don't like the idea of breaking jail. I always go back and tell him it was a mistake. Ugh. Let him try it there. No sheriff, and no sign of struggle. What do you make of that? Maybe the sheriff let him go. Uh-huh. And uh, maybe the sheriff went with him. Well, you sure have to have a good reason. How about the money? That's a good reason. I'll give you odds that we'll find one or both of them up there at the old man's place. That is, if we get there in a hurry. Well, if they're going to look that way, we better go that way. Yeah, listen, I appreciate what you did back there, but I don't quite understand why. Well, I'd do the same for any man. There's something about a lynching that sets my teeth on edge. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've been thinking about it. I, I think I better get back into town and get this thing settled up. If you're going to prove you're innocent, you better do it from a safe distance. Yeah. Well, maybe we can just circle around out here for two or three days and let the dust settle down, then go back in, huh? If you want my opinion, we better start riding far and fast, starting right now.
looking for, Sheriff? Well, what are you looking for, Charlie? I'm looking for you. Well, you're having better luck than I am. Now, what are you doing here? That's what we was going to ask you, Sheriff. Well, as a duly sworn-in officer of the law, it is my duty to find and protect the assets of any citizen who meets an untimely end. And that's why I'm here, doing my duty. Oh, come on, Sheriff. That's more than I can say for you vultures. I resent that, Sheriff. It is my duty and civic responsibility to see to it that these assets that you mention don't vanish before they reach the city treasurer's office. Furthermore, and in addition... Please. Yeah. Now, Sheriff, who was it told you where to dig? Nobody. They're just prospecting around. <laughs> With a piece of stick. <laughs> I say that you brought this thing out here to confuse us. And I say that that horse told you where to dig. That horse showed me nothing. Then why'd you turn him loose? I left him locked up in jail where he ought to be. Well, he ain't there now, Sheriff. There ain't nothing in that jail cell but dust. And that's why we rode out, Sheriff. They're them that thinks that you give him his freedom in return for him telling you where he hid the money. A prisoner escapes from jail, a cold-blooded killer, and you go chasing after the sheriff. People. Well, it seemed to make sense at the time. They aren't going chasing the dog. But don't make that fire too big. I just want to tell you how much I appreciated what you did back there. I already told you how I felt about that. You took a mighty big risk. I don't want to talk about it. Look, I know you appreciate what I did. Man says your life, you're bound to appreciate it. But you don't have to go on and on about it. Yeah. I'm Horace Cartwright. Chow Barnett. Chow. Is that what they named you? No. That's just what they call me. Child. <laughs> Come here, child. Child, behave yourself. Now, listen to me, child. By the time I was five years old, they forgot what my real name was. Well, there must have been somebody to write it down someplace. Somebody did. But neither one of them could read. Child. It's a funny name to be called a grown man, ain't it? What's so funny about that? Did your daddy name you Hoss when you was born? No, but... Well, then you ain't got no real name either. All you got is what people decide to call you. Even if your daddy named you George Washington Cartwright, if people decide to call you low down, mean, stupid, or dumb, all the George Washington in the world wouldn't change it. Yeah. It's kind of a dumb thing for me to say, wasn't it? Sorry about it. That's all right. I thought it was kind of funny when you told me your name was Horse. <laughs> it kind of fits you. night's sleep. I did, thank you. Now we got a cold trail to follow. Can't track a man in the dark, Charlie. Well, you can try. Maybe you can, but not me. I know it's a waste of time. Maybe you don't want to catch him. Just about the end of my string with you, Charlie. Ah, oh, Charlie. Where do we start looking for the track, Sheriff? South of town. They rode out of the alley that way. Big guy lived near Virginia City. I got a hunch it's one place he won't go. Uh-huh. What if your hunch is wrong? You'll probably never let me forget it.
suppose that was all about. Looks like a posse. Sure in a hurry. Two rooms, four beds, and wash basins, that'll be a dollar each a day. Uh, I need a bath. Some folks used a horse trough in front of the livery stable after dark. I'm glad some folks do. Is that a posse I saw right now? Oh, indeed it was. Who were they after? A murderer. Yes, first killing we had around here in almost a year now. Was it a gunfight? No, he killed him with a piece of fire which just stove his head in. Very foul crime. Stole his money, too. Money that was intended to build a church? Uh, you know that ain't so, Brother Stoner. He came to services regularly in the saloon and quite often made a donation. That don't mean he figured to build you a whole church. He was a good man, and the church is a worthy cause. Don't you agree, sir? Oh, yes, yes, of course. And just when did this killing take place? Yesterday. And the posse just left. Oh, well, the man has been in jail. Oh, he broke out. Not exactly. A fellow went in and helped him out with a key. That wasn't a very legal thing to do. Well, I can't find it in my heart to blame him. Certain members of our community were going to hang him. Only part way, Brother Stoney. You know that. They were going to hang him part way? Yes, until he told us where he hid the money. Then we we're going to leave it up to the law to hang him the rest of the way. Well, that would have made it legal. <laughs> Let's uh, clean up, boys. Kind of gives you something to think about, doesn't it? Well, hanging a man part way. Yeah. And with the parson, the fellow has a chance to get out of jail and to avoid a hanging, I'd do it. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Hawes. Hawes? Who? Hawes Cartwright. That's the man the posse's chasing. The killer. No, not, not Hawes. You're thinking about some other man. Hawes wouldn't kill anybody. <laughs> what makes you so sure? He's my son. <laughs> you should have got to know that boy better. Hotcakes are sure real fine about now, wouldn't they? I can't help you there, Horace. But here's something you might need. Just make you a little uneasy? Me? I'm supposed to be a murderer. You don't strike me as the murdering type. What exactly is a murdering type? A little man. Squinchy eyes, pinched face. Two weeks' growth of bed, wrinkled clothes, and a dirty hat. Yeah, I'd uh, be terrified by a man like that, all right. Hey, uh, aren't you worried about getting in trouble with them folks back there? No. Uh, they don't know me. I don't come from there. Where do you come from? No place in particular. I go where the wind blows me, and I don't like a lot of questions. Won't take much to get you out of sorts, neither, does it? Not a lot of sorts, Hoss. Like my pa tell me, the most interesting thing about a man is the part you don't know about. The part you have to guess. Where do you get that? Guess he made it up. A man who don't read, you don't get nothing from books. Yeah. Nice dusty road. Might be helpful if we made tracks in it. Possibly be along soon. If we don't confuse them, they'll be right on our coattails. Sounds to me like you've had some experience in this sort of business. Enough to know that you have to stay way ahead of a lynching party. Well, we got to meet and talk with them sometime. I mean, we got to settle this. This time next year should be about right. Now, you take that fork, and I'll take this one. Stay in the dust until you come to a hard ground along the roadside. 
and then cut north. And then we'll meet on the far side of that hill. Fine. From us. Oh, no place in particular. Just sort of go where the wind blows me. <laughs> Tell you the truth, Hoss. I don't know half the places where I'm from. Far not being happy in any one place. You tried farming, smithing, and cow punching. But a man that don't know how to read or figure numbers ain't good for nothing but chores. And he knew just enough to know that he wasn't getting what he wanted, but he didn't know how to go about getting it. And so we'd move on. Half the time, he didn't know where he was. And he was too dumb to read, too proud to ask. I'm from Virginia City. We ranch up there. That's where I'm heading as soon as I get this cleared with the law. If you're looking for a job, I'm not. Now, there's that relay station. You can get that breakfast you've been wanting. Yeah, that burn sure took every penny I got. I don't recall asking you for any money. Saddle. I won't be a minute. Just ride. What do you have, boss? Biscuits or beef? You stole that, didn't you? Ah, uh, you don't have to keep looking back. Man's not gonna leave a store full of stuff just to get this away from us. You shouldn't have done it. I didn't do nothing but take a little bit of food for a couple of days. I don't care what you done. It ain't right. I was hungry. Well, I don't give you a license to steal. I remember you telling me you was hungry. Not for stolen food, I ain't. Tastes just like the kind you buy. I don't care what it tastes like, it's going back. I don't seem to remember you complaining about those stolen horses. Them horses don't belong to you? I just took the first couple of good horses I could find. Child, don't you know we could be hung for that? Well, they're going to hang you anyway. Well, we'll settle the horses later, but right now, that stuff's going back. Well, this is not going back. This belongs to me. No, it don't. It belongs to the man you stole it from. What are we arguing about? This is just a sack of food. We're arguing about a principle. An empty stomach doesn't know any principles. Yeah, and a full stomach don't give you none, neither. Now you've made me lose my appetite. Good. Now let's take that stuff back. Give it here. I took it. Take it back myself. I'll tell you one thing, though. We're going to have to stop this fiddling around and do some hard riding. Or the posse will run right smack dab into us. I'll tell you one thing for you. Pretty good judge of horse flesh in the dark. I have to be. That's when I get most of my horses. <laughs>
they split up. Well, we've got to make a choice. We'll take this fork, see what we can find. Well, he's here just a minute. You don't suppose he'd try to find them two by himself, do you? I think he would. out of tracks. If I found any, I was uh, going to come and tell you about it. You wait here. Are you sure you don't want me to go with you? I did it. I'll undo it. What's the matter? You forget the salt? Check it. It's all there. Seems to be. Well, I guess that squares it. Mister, you you're going away hungry? That's the way it is. Howdy. Howdy. I didn't get a chance to meet you last time through. You uh, forgot this. No, I left it behind. Well, go on, take it with you. I don't have the money to pay for it. Well, I didn't ask you for any. No, I don't take charity. I swear, you do make it hard for a man to be Christian. You know what the good book says? It's blessed to give. Well, how in thunder is a man supposed to give if you won't take? Mama gave me this book before she died. She said to me, anything a man wanted to know was in this Bible. See this? I wrote my name in there. It says this, this Bible belongs to Child Barnett. How long has your mom been dead? She died when I was a young thing. I don't hardly remember her. You must cover the cost of that food. Oh, sure, but uh, I can't take your Bible. Well, you make out your bill and put it in this book. If I'm not back to pick it up, then this Bible is yours. If I do. Listen, I wanna, I wanna tell you how much I appreciate you getting these things. Uh, now you're not going to go on and on and on about that biscuit, are you? I think I was going to, yeah. Don't 
won't taste no different. Yeah. No sign of him. Nah, no, nothing. Well, the tracks are plain enough. Well, let's get after him. No, no. Let's rest the horses. But we can't. They need it, Joe. Well, you'll have to rest their horses, too. Come on. Hi, Buck. Gents. Sheriff. You boys are hungry. I'll be glad to rustle you up some grub. I don't say it'll be good, but it'll look good. for somebody, Buck. Yeah, anybody I know. Escape killing his partner. Speaking man, heavy set, wears a white hat. Name, uh, Horse? Horse Cartwright. Well, I didn't get his last name, but, uh, he didn't seem like a murderer to me. Well, which way'd he go? Well, he rode off in the direction of Juniper Springs. That was, oh, maybe an hour ago. Seemed like they were in much of a rush. No. No, as a matter of fact, they forgot something first time around, and they come back and straightened it out. And then they rode off slow and easy, like they had all the time in the world. Well, that means their horses are still fresh, and... How's a road out? What's that, Buck? Could we borrow some of your company horses? Well, them horses broke the harness, Sheriff. I don't know how much good they're going to be under a saddle. Well, at least they'll be fresh. Well, you're welcome to help yourself. You can turn yours loose in the empty corral. See anything? Yeah, I thought I saw something move way out there. Get closer. Hasn't been more than 20 minutes since those horses have been outside their tracks. You should catch sight of them just about any time. Yeah, any time now, unless they see us first. Of course, these horses won't give much of a race. Well, we've only got one chance. Can't run them down. We'll have to shoot them down. If we kill him, we'll never find out where that money is. And if you let him get away... Just pull it here, huh? I thought so. Picked up a rock. Another alley, he'd be pulling up lane. You know, it hey, just everybody that would have known that. I don't know. I've been around horses all my life. I was gonna make sure you was a man like you on the Ponderosa. I'm not looking for a job. What do you got against honest work? Nothing. You ever had a job? I have plenty of them. I have to do have a loan. I can't stand being in the bunkhouse full of people with somebody telling me what to do all the time. Well, what I had in mind was a little land check we got way up in Cibolo Canyon. Generally keep a man up there the year around, just riding fence and gathering in a few strays. I don't want any job. It's lonely. Hard work, but good pay. Stop it right there. What's the matter? I don't want any job. Why? Because I can't read. Reading ain't altogether the reason. I got to figure that when a man won't slow down long enough to make his beans and his bacon, then somebody must be after him, chasing him. Well, you're kind of mixed up, aren't you? I mean, it's you that's chasing, not me, remember? Yeah, but it's you that don't want to go back. Now, that's something you ain't telling me. And besides that, I knew you couldn't read before I offered you the job. Oh, what do you mean, you knew? I gave you that book. It said, this Bible, the property of child Barnett. That ain't what it said. What do you mean it ain't what it said? It said, this Bible, the property of... Joshua Barnett. Joshua. Joshua Barnett.
even be. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh. I tried to stop you. I took you, Austin. Left you with the old man. I figured you did. Being the judge of horse flesh, you are. But I, I, I did kill the old man. Nobody killed him. He just fell down and died. I found him lying dead. He was peaceful and quiet. I, I tore up the cabin. I figured he wouldn't be needing the money. He'd be leaving behind. Where is the money? There's never no money. It's just a lot of talk. Just a lot. Years we've been nice to that old man for nothing. Boss, boss. All that money. Just talk. I don't believe it was talk. That old man had money, and I think it's still up there somewhere. How come you're so sure? I just feel it in my bones. Let's go. Go where? Go back to jail. What for? You heard it. The old man died of natural causes. Your son stole a couple of horses. Now, Sheriff, you know he didn't steal any horses. You heard that, too. He broke jail. Nobody breaks out of my jail. It was either break jail or get lynched. We did find those horses. And I'll see that you get them, too. If a man feels that way, I... Guess there's no use stirring up any trouble. That's right. scot-free either. For the rest of their lives, they'll be thinking about that money. Spending all the time looking for it, worrying for fear somebody else will find it before them. And the funny part was, there wasn't no money. But they won't believe that either. They're greedy. So they're suspicious. Well, that kind of man carries his own jail around with him. I'm still smoking here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come 
Oh, don't take root there. Just put it out, will you? Hold your horses, little brother. Saddle. Cavalry. Somebody's in trouble. I'm surprised he got this far. Candy, I, I got some medicine and bandages here in my saddlebag. No, this is too late. What we need now is a bugler to blow taps. Again, the blood spots.
Well, well, it ain't Sergeant Canada's boy. All grown up. Order the ordinance, man. Haven't you blowed yourself up yet? That's what I always liked about you. Always a kindy greeting. Where you been, boy? Oh, riding. Looking around. I'll take him. kids. That's the kind of horse soldiers we get these days. They think we won this fight. We've all got to learn. Yeah, but it takes time. My guess is these kids ain't gonna live that long. You take cover, Mrs. Harris. I'm glad you happened by when you did. We need help badly. Yeah, we sure do. That's right, Candy. You gave me quite a shock when I seen you. You better brace yourself. You're gonna have a few shocks yourself. I gotta take care of the horses and get sorted out. It'll be a while for the charges. That's right, Sergeant. Is Mr. Cartwright? Uh, that's Mr. Canada. Candy for short. Kennedy? Yeah, I've known him since he's no bigger than my thumb. I helped raise him. You and every other non-com on the road? His father used to be first sergeant in B Troop, my old outfit. He was killed in patrol. Mr. Kennedy, my thanks for giving us a hand. Sure. Sergeant, I want a man posted here at all times. One on the trail where we came in, and one on the lakeside. That slope's almost vertical, but they might try it anyway. And Mr. Cartwright. I'm short of men. I'm going to have to use you and your people, too, if I may. Sure. Captain, this fellas down there were riding after you pretty hard. What were they after? Gold. Army gold. That ambulance is a pay wagon. You're right, but I'm going to have to ask you how you knew. Well, like the sergeant said, I'm an army brat. I grew up at Fort Despair. Fort what? Fort Delaney. The men there called the Fort Despair. And a lot of other things. The trouble was that the um, army owned the forts and the outlaws owned the trails in between them. And Colonel Spit and Polish John Purcell had an idea to use an ambulance as a pay wagon to move payroll gold. It worked fine for a while until the, uh, until the word got out. Well, Captain, I think the army would be better off to use a real pay wagon now. The outlaws would probably think it was an ambulance. Guard plus our man, sir. Very good. Something ain't I had a chance to tell you, Candy. Angel Montana's boss that bunch out there. Yeah, I saw him when he was shooting at me. You know him? Yeah, I know him, too. We were kids together. He was one of the blanket Indians that hung around the Fort Gate. Half Mexican, half Apache. And all bad. Trooper Perkins is badly wounded. He's in great pain. I've done everything I can for no, him. I know you have. He's only a boy. He's terribly frightened. If you could just talk to him.
Ja. She was my wife. Go up there and draw their attention from the back. We will attack from the front. See patrol. Andale. Get shorter. The party's now down to four able bodied men and my wife. And four of us. What's their strength? About 18 at last count. But Trooper O'Brien rode out of dawn this morning. Captain. Be... I uh, didn't have a chance to tell you, but we, uh, we found Trooper O'Brien. The last thing he was able to say was that Captain Harris needed help. Look, as a favor to me, I'd like my wife to go on thinking that O'Brien got through all right. Of course. Jim! Oh, oh. It's shut full of holes! I didn't see it in time. I, I know, honey, you were taking care of Percy. Cut it, cut it! There's about a quart left. again, Mr. Kennedy. Seems that we're more than ever in your debt. Forget it. I don't think they'll try that again. Just thinking all that water I wasted on those dead ashes. I think we could use a couple of buckets of that lake. That full. Mm. That's great. That means we got a little less than six quarts left for us and the animals, and they got a stream within easy reach of where they're dug in. Captain, what about ammunition? Well, my people have between 40 and 50 rounds per man. How about yours? I guess about the same. Ah. Uh, I suppose we should pass the wood around with nobody to shoot at anything unless they can't miss. We'll be here a long time. Captain Harris! Sergeant Orty! All right, we see your white flag. What do you want? I want to talk to Canada. Candy, this is your old friend, your old amigo, Angel. Angel Montana, come on out and talk to me. Nelly, to my old friend. Here I am. Speak your piece. Candy, you are on the wrong side. You should be down here with us. 
I like it where I am. <laughs> you joke, amigo. After what the army did to you, you could not want to help the army. Give it up, Angel. Right away while you still can. Why you want to die to protect gold that is not yours? Come with me. I will give you a double share. Not interested. I will give you back the woman they stole from you. Come on. And then we spend the gold in Mexico City. For the last time, I'm not interested. Somebody must have kicked you on the head. You are not smart anymore. Angelina. I had him in my sight three or four minutes. You're good to have around. No, you will all die. And the woman, she will die a hundred times. Winged him. I sure did. Kay, down! Get down! I tell them and I tell them. But they never listen. Candy's pure army, Brad. Grew up in the forts of Southwest. Didn't know that, huh? Uh uh. No, he never told us. His mother died when he was four. Heat, dust, frontier lonesomes. Happened pretty often on Comro. He knew the manual of arms when he was seven. When he was nine, his pa was killed. No folks, no place to go. A lot of us had a hand in raising him. If you want to call it that, mostly he. He grew up by himself. He was riding scout at the age of 17. Do you mind if I join you? There's one thing that hasn't changed. What? Army iron ration. Make a billy goat go hunting for a nice tender tin can. How's your father? I've only seen him once since... since I saw you last. He was in Washington about a year ago. Hey, his hair is snow white. He's got a few more lines on his face, but otherwise he hasn't changed. You wouldn't know how. <laughs> Colonel Spit and Polish, Purcell. You're wondering about her, huh? Another army, Brad. Her pa served with Candy Spa, both of the non-coms. When the war come, he, uh, he got a battlefield commission, ended up as a colonel. They grew up together, fought and made up. Then one day, he come back from patrol after a run and fight with the Apache. Four survivors, seven bodies stretched across the saddles. Doing a man's work, he, he figured he was a man. So he, he took Anne into town and married her. And when they got back to the fort, he, he marched in and told the colonel. Two hours later, he was he was riding out on another patrol. I might as well say it, there's one man I learned to hate. So did I. Oh, he only did what he thought was best for both of us. You can believe that, and I don't. I was going to kill him when I got back to the fort. I'm still not sure why I didn't. Because you couldn't. You know, you've changed. You're a lot prettier than you were. Because I didn't know where you were. Back east, that's all he told me. You were back east and the marriage was annulled. 
He promised me he'd see you got all my letters. When he was in Washington, he, he just said you wrote off and left no address. He's a liar. Jim. Uh, uh, my husband, Captain Harris. Yeah, we met. Mr. Kennedy, my wife told me all about you. We were just talking about you, too, Captain. Oh. Anne, you know, it really isn't safe for you to be wandering around up here at night. You might silhouette yourself Jim, against this. You forget, I was born out here. I knew that before I was five. Stay below the crest. It's the first thing you learn out here, isn't it, Candy? Yes, just about. You're right, Anne. I, I did forget. That wasn't nice. He's been very good to me. And he's an officer and a gentleman, just what the colonel wanted. Stop that. He was what I thought I wanted. I thought I was never going to see you again. Don't you understand? I had learned to live with that. I told myself you were dead. Why did you have to come back now when it's too late? It's not too late. Yes, it no, is. No, it isn't, Anne. And any other time, any other place, I'd, I'd just walk up and we'd say hello and goodbye politely. And then I'd just walk away and maybe I'd come back and stand and look. Well, here, there's no time to look. You're my wife, Anne. Yes, you are. You're my wife. I don't care what it says in some book someplace. You're my wife. was my wife, Mr. Cartwright. And I sure didn't know that marriage. Anything? It's all quiet now. There was some movement down there a few minutes ago. Let's hope they stay down there. Yeah. At least we got the moonlight on our side. But they got to know we're running out of water. Well, it's tomorrow's problem. I'll be back in about an hour. If you see Candy, tell him I'm looking for him. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to figure out what I'd do in Candy's place, and I don't come up with no answers. You're not using that? Reckon it's the least we can do for Kelly. Yeah, all right. We won't be telling Montana's bunch anything they don't already know. You seen Candy? It's bedroll, but he ain't in it. Captain and his missus was by a few minutes ago. He was asking about him, too. Maybe you better search the area. I already did. Going, huh? Saving his hide. I don't know what I blame him. You believe what you want, but don't ever say that again. Not where I can hear it.
Jim, I don't believe it. Andy wouldn't just leave. Look, Annie, you've got to believe it. I don't know how or why, but he's gone. We've searched everywhere. Honey, you've got to get some sleep. I will, Jim. Presently. Bugle. Why do they play that, huh? For the dead. If you want to think about something, think about the four little fat kegs of gold that Rio saw yesterday. Four little fat kegs of gold that we will have tomorrow. down into their camp. How? Uncle Ito was a friend of mine once, remember? He taught me how a long time ago. D did you see him? He almost stepped on me. But he didn't see me. For the first time, I'm beginning to believe we might get out of this. And for the first time, I'm beginning to realize that Mr. Kennedy is quite a man. Oh, he is, Jim. He is. Yeah, don't expect no cheers from me. I just want to know which guard you passed on the way in. Skinny, blonde-haired kid. It figures. He'll never make a soldier. Now we double the guard. No one else can get through. They've got us boxed in, as nearly as I could tell. No way out. It was my idea to spook their horses, take their attention off us. There's no chance. They've got four guards on those horses. I counted 11 of them all together. There's a stream down there, plenty of water. Everybody was carrying full bandoliers. Yeah, well, you ain't telling us anything we don't know, and you could have got yourself killed. Could have left us without any gun we need. Like I said, don't expect any cheers from me. All right, Odie, I didn't ask for any. You better get some sleep. You'll be doing guard duty in two hours. I didn't want to guess what was down there. I wanted to know. Or did you want to impress Mrs. Harris? Two hours. I'll be back to wake you up. could do this thing. Tomorrow we kill him. See. Si. Up 
There, they're running short of bullets. Even in the dark. Even in the dark, I wouldn't have believed that a man could get in and out of that camp alive. Well, it's an acquired skill. Candy was born on the frontier. Skill, yes, but great courage, too. There is gold in that ambulance. Four small kegs of it. And Angel and his men aren't going to give up until they've got it. Look, all he wants is the gold. Why don't we just give it to him? Because once we'd give him the gold, they'd kill us anyway. They don't want any witnesses. That's right. They've got plenty of ammunition and water, and we're running out of both. Even an optimist would have to say that the enemy is going to win this battle. My first battle. My first time in the field. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. No, of course not. Maybe somebody will happen along after all we did. Just by chance and in sufficient numbers to give us the help we need. No, Mr. Cartwright, I don't believe that. Neither do you. If it should come to that, I hope you won't let them take my wife alive. Hey, it's just like you, Candy, guessing again. No, I'm not guessing, I know. An old ordinance man like you wouldn't walk across a parade ground without three or four sticks of dynamite in your pocket. Against regulations. <laughs> when did regulations start bothering you, Artie? A long escort mission like this, you'd bring a whole bundle. All right. I had six sticks till a week ago. We camped at White River, and I, uh, <laughs> I got a hundred with a fresh draft. Now, I'm talking about now. Three. I got three sticks left. You got fuse? We ain't gonna use fuse. Why not? We throw it at them, they throw it back. We'll use a short fuse. No. I got something else, something special. of mercury. No fuse needed. 86 pounds of impact. <laughs> That's what the book says, 86 pounds. Me, I, uh, I ain't so sure I sweat when I look at them. I don't blame you. Take it easy. Be careful. So what we gotta do is, uh, figure out a way to make Anchor Montana lean on these things, 86 pounds worth. That's right. Nobody! This... This is punishment for babies. You make me hurt you. I give you pain you never even dream about. This is no big thing. The gold does not belong to you. Tell them to give us the gold. And we all part friends, huh? That woman up there, she is your wife. She's a very beautiful woman. You do like I say. I don't know her. You don't do as I say. I know her better! <laughs> Gun away. We attack into their guns. We lose more men. We tie him to those trees. In the daylight, 
they see he is alive, they get mad, they worry, they make mistakes. He couldn't get past them. Uh, I guess he felt he had to try. He's a fool. He should have known better. Yes, he should have known better. But I suppose he felt he had to impress the lady, too. the dynamite? I went to get him, didn't I? Oh, it's my fault. No, I should have known he'd try. Miss Ann, he only did what he, what he thought he had to do. Don't go faulting yourself. more whiskey than a man could ever drink. <laughs> yeah. Give me the detonators. Patch a shirt down there, it'd be a clean shot. Yeah. Only trouble is you'd be killing two men. First him and then Captain Harris. We'll need a white flag. Yeah, I'll get a towel from the ambulance.
Mr. Bennett. I'll get him back for you. You let the captain go. One. There are four in that ambulance wagon. Give us four kegs, and we give you the captain. Just one. All. We want it all. Captain Harris. No, I don't. I can't. I can't understand that. Please. Can you please help me? Anne? It's time to go. See, the colonel give him my regards. Tell him for me you married yourself quite a man. Oh, 
I'll tell you. They're sleeping out on the ground ain't my idea of a picnic. I'm gonna miss those soft beds back at Ponderosa, I guarantee you. Cheer up, boss. As we reach a high country and round up the herd and drift them back down the winter range, you'll be back in a nice soft bed about two weeks from now. <laughs> hey, you got coming. Evening. Evening. I'm Carl Walker, sheriff of Muddy Creek. Oh, yeah. Coffee. Saw your fire and smelled your coffee. Ah, well, there's plenty more there. We'll bring in some coffee, huh? Hey, Sheriff. Isn't that Luke Harper? Cliff Harper's kid brother? Yeah. Coffee'd be fine, but what I really need is a couple of fresh horses. I think we can help you out, Sheriff. We have some pretty good ones in our remuda. We'll exchange them for yours. Well, fine. If you're ever in Muddy Creek, I'll have them waiting for you. Thank you. Hey. Hey, how about me? I need some coffee, too. Hmm? Climb off of this side, Luke. It's all right to give him a cup. Don't get too close to him. Hold it right there. He's crazy enough to try something. Sheriff, I'm gonna see you dead, I promise you. Luke wasn't alone when I waylaid him at his girl's place. The other one got away. My brother's gonna make you sorry you ever put a gun on me. I can go for the rest of you. I've wired the U.S. Marshal. He should be in Muddy Creek in the morning with a half a dozen men. I've got to get Luke in there and keep him in jail till they come. In the meantime, your fresh horses will be help enough. Uh, let's pick him up, Sheriff. Uh, Joe, unsettle these two. Right. <laughs> Now, if y'all just cut me loose, I'll be on my way. You're still on your way to Muddy Creek. Cliff's gonna kill you! I can't put you all over you like stairs! Oh, but you killed a law, man. Not the law. Mr. Now hold it right there. That's Harper, all right. That's him. That's Luke Harper. Where's Sheriff Walker? Well, this man killed him. You're not bringing Luke Harper into this town. Look, this man's got to go to jail. He's a killer. So's his brother. So's his brother's gang. And we don't want them coming here after Luke. All right, Judy. I'll handle this. All right, mister. I don't know what your name is. Cartwright. Ben all Cartwright. All right, all right, Mr. Cartwright. We're not going to argue with you. We're going to tell you. You're going to let Luke Harper go free. Cliff Harper warned us. We locked Luke in our jail. He's going to burn the town. We're all going to die. What'd I tell you? That's Cliff. When did he warn you? How? Last night. Telegram. And he will, too. He'll burn this town, take hostages, and kill us all. He's done it to other towns. He's on his way here right now. So is the U.S. Marshal with six deputies. Maybe. What if Cliff Harper and his men get here first? What if they do? You got enough men, enough rifles to hold them off till the Marshal gets here? Harper's men are killers. We wouldn't have a chance. You let an outlaw tell you what to do? Are you talking too much? Come on, cut me loose. Come on! What do you think?
you think Cliff Harper will do when he finds out his brother got killed in this town? We're going to put Luke Harper in your jail. Now, you can stop us if you want to. But you're going to have to use those rifles if you do. He killed him. Well, how'd you get him into town? You knew what those fellas were fixing to do. Look, I don't want no part of any harbor. I just told you Sheriff Walker's dead. That means that you're in charge here. No, sir. I ain't in charge. This man has to be locked up till the marshal gets here. Uh, you mean till Cliff Harper gets here? Sorry, not me. If you want him locked up, you do it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes after you're gone, I'm gonna be out of here. You know, the people in this town are so scared they're gonna beg me to go. Oh, I think we'll find somebody who won't be too scared. No, ten minutes, call right, that's all. Ten minutes after you're gone, I am out of here. <laughs> I got a feeling he's right. No, he's not right. We're gonna find somebody who'll guard him till the marshal gets here. You won't find anyone like that in this town. I'm Mrs. Walker, Sheriff Walker's wife. Oh, Mrs. Walker, I'm sorry. You don't have to say anything. I knew it would happen. I tried to get him not to go, but, but it was his job. And he was sure there'd be help when he needed it made the same mistake you're making. He believed in people. Well, there are no real people. Not in Muddy Creek. Go ahead. See if you can find anyone with guts enough to help you guard that prisoner. Find one. Mrs. Walker was right. No, she wasn't. Well, we start looking. It's kind of scary. Hey, mister! I know somebody will help you. Somebody we ain't scared. Come on! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on now. Oh, we gotta hurry. Everybody says the Harper gang can get here just any minute. Uh, where is this somebody you're talking about? He's a real gunfighter. He fought Indians when he was building the telegraph. He fought gunmen, too. Come on. Jenkins. How are you, sir? Ben Cartwright, my son Joseph. Jenkins. I've been telling him about the gunfights you had. Yes, your, uh, your grandson's very proud of you, sir. Well, Tommy, you, you uh, shouldn't be telling those stories. Uh, he, he does exaggerate. You did fight Indians. You told me. Oh, that was a long time ago. I, I was a young man then. Well, you're gonna help, ain't you? Well, I'm an old man now, Tommy. Of course I want to help, but maybe Mr. Carter doesn't want me to. He does. You want him, don't you? He ain't scared like the others. Never met a man who hasn't been scared at one time or another. Grandpa's not scared. We'll have to let Mr. Cartwright decide whether or not he wants me to help, Tommy. 
I wouldn't blame him at all if he wanted a younger man. No. I believe your, your grandfather's absolutely right. Yes, he's absolutely right. Uh, Joseph, uh, check the settlement. Yes. Yeah. Nice meeting you, Mr. Jenkins. Sheriff's dead. The man that killed him is in your jail. I think his brother is going to turn him loose. I need some men, some guards, to see that doesn't happen. I'm asking for help. Not me, mister. Bring the card. You can finish that game at the jail. We like it here. Good, Alicia. Both awake. You're wearing a gun. What about it? You're out on the street with a gun. How about you? Uh, I guess Luke Harper was right. He said I wouldn't find a man in this town that would help. Looks like I can't even find a man. Casey. You get out of here. I don't want you in my saloon. Now you get out of here. Not till I finish my beer. Another beer, bartender. <sighs> you bring me that beer now, huh? Get me a beer. And give me a damn cloth. You're the guy that brought Luke Harper into town. You must be the young Cartwright. Mm hmm. Well, I'm Casey Collins. Where'd everybody go? The men? Well, they ran. The truth was just more than they could stand to hear. Casey, you go on now. Don't wait for me. I quit this job. I was waiting for my pay, but now I think I leave the money and save my life. If you're smart, you'll come with us now. Go on. How's he doing? Oh, he's going to be OK. Yeah, why'd he jump me? Oh, I guess he was trying to prove something. What? that he's at least one cut better than the rest of the spineless wonders in this town. Mr. Cartwright, we're just coming over to see you. Yeah. We, the property owners of this town, talk things over, decide to relieve you of your responsibility and take matters in their own hands. They want you out of town, Mr. Cartwright, so they can set that killer free. Linda, please. Is that what you intend to do? It's already late afternoon. If the marshal was coming, he'd be here by now. We're going to turn Harper loose, and we don't want any interference from you. To put things bluntly, Mr. Cartwright, it's our business and not yours. I always thought the law was everybody's business. We don't want our town burned to the ground. Then don't let them burn it. Hey, I guess you both better read that. 
The marshal's been delayed. He won't get here till tomorrow. Your brother's a little late getting here. Yeah, don't fret it. You just be sure you wake me when he gets here. Yeah, we'll do that. Joe, why don't you get some sleep? I'll take the first watch. Yeah, it sounds good. Feel like I haven't slept in a week. That's not so bad after all, though. I get to sleep on this nice soft couch while my brother Hoss has to sleep on the cold, cold ground. Five minutes past seven. deserted. Looks like Luke Harbour was right about the people of this town. Austin, the boy should have reached Aspen Meadows by now. Get out there and bring them back here as quick as you can. Wait a minute. Marshall said he'd be here today, but he didn't say when. Harbour and his men can be here anytime. I'm aware of that. You wouldn't stand a chance against them alone. You're wasting time. Come on, I'll help you side your horse. back as quick as I can, Father. They all run like scared rabbits, ain't they? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Tell your brother I set you free. You'll shake your hand. Now, come on, get the keys. They ain't here. The best. They gotta be in the fast. What are you waiting for? He oughtn't to interfered. Will you get that keys? You stupid car hire! <laughs> I promise you. 
Because you say you did. You've got to understand. I worked and saved all my life to get that hotel. I couldn't see it be burned. If I lose my hotel, I got nothing. I have to start all over again. And I'm too old to do that. You, you do understand, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? You should have been ready to fight for it, Dan. What are you doing here? I'm as big a fool as my husband was. You better let me clean out that cut on your head. There's a pump of fresh water outside. Too deep, not bleeding badly. It'll stop soon. Why didn't you run away with the others? I thought about it, and then I decided this is where I belong. Too bad nobody else felt the same way. Oh, we used to have people like that once. Not lately. No, not lately. I tried to tell you that, but you wouldn't listen. I just wouldn't believe it. There wouldn't be some people that'd stay. Not in Muddy Creek. We're both wrong, Mrs. Walker. One woman. A lot more than one. Two. You need men. Down. Two women, an old man, and a little boy. Carl would have called them liabilities. Well, they may be liabilities, but they stayed. They could get killed or held hostage to force you to free Luke. If you do what's best, you'll send them all away. You all right? Yes, I'm fine. How fine. about some coffee? Uh, uh, don't you need something stronger? We're having coffee. It's your choice, Mr. Cartwright. I'll have coffee. With muscle. Good. Now I've got some breakfast started in the saloon. Oh, bacon and eggs in the hotel. Ladies. Look, we don't have too much time. Why don't you two join forces? Well, it's all right with me. But I'm sure she probably wouldn't want to go into the saloon. I'd be happy to. We could all use some food. Yeah. Uh, I imagine your son could use some coffee. I'll take this inside. Uh, ma'am, uh, my son isn't here. He, uh, well, I, I sent him out for help, and since I don't know when that help is going to get here, you folks would just have to leave town. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright. But when I came to Muddy Creek, I came to stay. Well, I'm staying, too. We're staying, too. That's good. We need all the help we can get. I thought I was the only stubborn one. You're all being just a little bit stubborn. I can't let you stay here. I don't know who's going to get here first, my men or the marshals or the Harper gang. It doesn't matter. I've been run out of a lot of towns before. But this time I stayed and they ran. And I kind of like that. Mr. Cartwright, my husband was a soldier. He died fighting for his country. The least I can do is help defend our town. Grandpa ain't leaving. He ain't gonna run. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm the telegraph operator. I have to stay and look after the telegraph. Well, I, uh, I appreciate what you've all been saying, and I'm grateful for it, but you're gonna have to get out of town anyway, and since there isn't very much time, you gals better get that breakfast going right now. Come on, ladies, get moving. I want you to send some telegrams for me. Oh, sure. Uh, come over to the office. Hey, Carl he better eat hearty, huh? He won't be alive come supper time. You know, Cliff and the boys, they weren't so far behind. They rode all night. They'd be here real soon now. 
Luke, you'll tell your brother I tried to help you so that he won't burn my hotel. I pour on a kerosene and strike him matches myself. I guess I shouldn't have told Tommy all those stories, Mr. Cartwright. I'm no hero. I'm just an old man. Well, I only did it to try to show him the difference between wrong and, and right. But, but he took the stories all wrong, and now he can't wait to see you kill a man. I tried to tell him what it's really like, but he just won't listen. Well, he's still young. Well, I better get out those telegrams. He yeah. wants sent. Where to? Well, every town around here. I want you to ask every telegrapher you know if he's seen Cliff Harper or the Marshal and where and when. You said it about burning my hotel, did you? You're real worried about that, ain't you? Well, you, you couldn't have meant it. it. It's senseless. How many ever word of it? Now, listen. I stayed behind. I, I tried to help you. You tried? You should have killed Cartwright. You had the chance. I couldn't. I'm no killer. It's like Cliff says. Kill or be killed. What do you mean, be killed? You let Cartwright live. Cliff ain't going to like that. Cartwright, you're going to let me out here. Luke swears he's going to have his brother kill me because I didn't shoot you. <laughs> now, you, you can't keep me locked up in here until his brother comes. What do you want me to do? Give me a chance to hit me over the head again? You can give me a chance to defend myself. Now, I, I ain't a gunslinger, but I was a soldier once, and I know how to use the rifle. <laughs> you should have thought that before. You're alone. You can't stop Cliff Harper and his men. But the two of us might. Together, we'd have a chance. Give me a gun. Now, let me out of here. Why should I trust you? That's right. man changed once. He'll have to do it again. You think I'd shoot the only man who has a chance to save me? I, I didn't shoot you before when I had the chance, did I? You're making a mistake. You won't regret this. I'm willing to bet you do. I'll get out there and keep watching. Do you really think you do like he says? He's just like everybody else in this town. Yellow-bellied. Mr. Cartwright, can I... can I see you for a minute? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Snake Crossing. The telegrapher says that Cliff Harper and two of his men rode through just before dawn. That means they'll be here in less than two hours. Nothing for the marshal yet. No, not a word. gonna bite you. This is your first time in a saloon, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it's no different. We have tables and chairs in here just like you have across the street. We even eat with knives and forks. 
I guess I have been a little uppity. Well, we both have. We don't have much time left. Are you scared? Terribly. Yeah, so am I. Well, come on. Let's see if we can finish setting these tables without breaking anything. Is Mr. Cartwright coming? Oh, yeah. He said he'd be right here. I'll go and get him. Tommy, you stay right where you is he? He don't know enough. For him, it's all a game. He'll learn. We all do. No, I don't want this. I'm not hungry. Now, you should eat something. No, I don't think I can. I already had my breakfast. Sure. I understand. Isn't a chance that Marshall will get here in time, is there? I sure wouldn't bet on it. It's not likely that Mr. Cartwright's men will get here before that Harper gang either. What are we going to do? Well, we'll just have to do whatever Mr. Cartwright says. Now, this ought to cheer you up a little bit. Everything's ready. You better eat it while it's hot. I brought some things, too. I got him. Here he is. Sit down, Mr. Cartwright. Everything's ready. Everybody eat now. We've got to get out of here as quickly as possible. We want to stay. We're not much, but we're better than nothing. Please, I want you to do exactly as I ask. He means we'll hurt more than we help. But we could be a big help, couldn't we? Mr. Cartwright knows what's best, Tommy. But what if he need us? Then we'll come back on the double. All right, now get going, quickly. Time's run out. Run out just like your friends did. Cliff says, man, can't count on nobody. Well, maybe you can't even count on your brother Cliff. Ah, oh, he's coming. Now, you can count on that much, Carl, right? He's coming. I'll be waiting. Hey, what you doing in rifle? That's something mine. Better be good. It won't work. And whatever it is, Cartwright, it ain't gonna work. Cliff's too smart for you, Cartwright. It ain't gonna work.
You a bigger fool than I thought. <laughs> think an old blood's gonna work, huh? You think all them old rifles gonna scare Cliff? No, I don't. I don't know if that bluff is gonna work or not. I know it's an old one. Now, why not, huh? Why'd you go to all that trouble? You know, you ain't got that much time left, huh? Now, why'd you go to all that... Just hold your tongue and I'll tell you why. Now, that fellow yours is a gunslinger. I'm not. If those rifles can make him hesitate just one second, that's all the time I'm gonna need. You never get no edge on Cliff, huh? I'll holler. I'll yell my head off when he comes riding into this. Now, you just turn around, put your back to those bars and stick your hands through. Oh, no. You won't shoot me enough. Then I, I will if I have to. But you need me alive for the marshal. Marshal doesn't care if you're alive or dead. Cartwright, you don't have to. Move over. Do what I tell you. And stick your hands through. Move. I'm going to get you, Cartwright. I'm going to see you dead. You hear me? I'm going to take on your grave. Your clip don't get you, I will. Oh, it's going to be a joy. Cartwright, I'm going to kill you and all your kids. You hear me? All that bang up. Mmm. Mmm. I run out on you just like all the others. Never used to it. I never run out of corn. I stood up. I stood up always to, to any man. Easy now, easy now. Let me lay you down. Who shot you? Cliff, a Harper, I, I could stay away. I, I had to come back. I, I tried to ambush him, but he's too smart. Just stop talking. Don't talk to uh, Tell, tell Casey I, I come back. Yeah, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Right, right now. Cliff, easy. Cliff Harper is, is right. Be, I, I'm, stays. Yep. Always is. Maybe more than one this time. 
You should have run like the others. Maybe they didn't run. Always do. Not everybody. Not always. Where's Luke? In jail. I warned these people what I'd do if they put Luke in jail. Harper, go back where you came from. You're completely surrounded. There's a dozen rifles aimed at your backs right at this minute. Take a look. All around you. I'm not buying that bluff. Unbuckle your belts. want you to worry about us. We did it, we did it. We got him, didn't we, Mr. Cartwright, didn't we? I bet Grandpa hit one. He did real good aim. I bet. Look! All right, Mrs. Walker. My two boys and some of our drovers. We're all right now. is going to stay on in town until his men have rounded up the rest of the Harper gang. Well, I reckon the folks in this town will sleep a lot better tonight than they did last night, huh? I wouldn't bet on it. Their consciences will be working overtime. I know a few people who won't have that problem. 
I don't know about the rest of them, but I was scared. I don't mind admitting it. I didn't want to come back. Well, I'll tell you something. I was scared, too, and I want to thank you very much for everything. Well, Young fella, you take good care of yourself. Huh? Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mr. Cartwright, I, I wish you could have known my husband. You're, you're so much alike. Well, it was an honor just to have met him. Bye-bye. Bye. Real people, Muddy Creek. Real people. Yeah. There are always some.